In this video, we're continuing on with the graphing linear inequalities worksheet provided by CUDA software. I'll leave a link in the description below as to how to access that worksheet. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off number five. Y is greater than two X minus five. So our slope is two, which is the same as two over one. So two is our rise, one is our run. Our Y intercept occurs at negative five. So we're going to find zero, negative five on the graph, and then we're going to go up two for the rise and over one for the run. Now we're going to connect those points, but not using a solid line, since y is not greater than or equal to, it's only greater than. So the values along this line are not included in the inequality, so they don't hold true for the inequality. Now we're going to pick a test point, let's just pick 0, 0, to see which way we shade. So we're going to plug 0 in for y and 0 in for x, which we know 2 times 0 is 0, so we're going to be left with negative 5. 0 is indeed greater than negative 5, so we're going to shade in including that test point. So this is everything to the left of that inequality line. Let's continue on to number six. In number six, our m, or our slope, is seven fourths, and the y-intercept occurs at the positive two. So when x is zero, y is two. Now if we were to go up seven and over four, we would be off the graph, but we know that a negative over a negative results in a positive, so instead, let's go down seven and to the left four. That will put us at the point negative four, negative five. Now we're going to draw a line and connect, and this is indeed a solid line, meaning that the values on the line are true for the inequality. Since y is greater than or equal to seven over four times x plus two. Now we're going to pick a test point. Let's use 0, 0 and see if that is true for this inequality. Plugging 0 in for y and plugging 0 in for x, that'll just become 0. And we have that 0 is greater than or equal to 2, which we know is not true. Therefore, we're not going to shade in including the 0, 0. We're going to shade in the other side since our test point is not included in the shaded region. And that's the answer for number six. And I apologize for my line not being completely crisp and straight. So I recommend using a straight edge at home, but I don't have the tools that I need here on my computer. But just remember when you're doing this, just try and draw the line as straight as possible. Number seven, we have x is less than negative five. Our slope in this case is undefined because it's a vertical line. Regardless of the y values, x is always less than negative 5. So we're going to locate the x equals negative 5 line, but it's going to be dashed since x is less than, not less than or equal to. So go ahead and draw that dashed line, and then we're going to shade in to the left since the x values are less than negative 5. So that would be negative 6, negative 7, and so on, regardless of y. And now on to number eight, the last problem I'm going to do in this video. Before we go over this, click that subscribe button and also give me a thumbs up for this video. For number eight, our slope is four thirds and our y-intercept occurs at negative four. So zero, negative four, and then we're going to go up four and to the right three for the rise over run. Those points are going to be connected with a straight line. Now let's see which way we're going to shade. Let's use our test point of zero, zero. If you plug in zero for x, that'll be zero, so you'll be left with negative four. Is zero less than or equal to negative four? No, 
that's not true. So we're not going to shade in including the zero, we're going to shade in the side that does not include zero. So that's everything to the right or below this solid line. And that's the answer to number eight.